This company not only owns the famous filter copy brand, but also other media channels like Dice, Gobble, Nutshell, Cloud, with a huge audience base of more than 25 million plus on all their social media platforms. Pocket Aces owns say five Instagram channels, but they also manage 130 influencers with 130 separate Instagram channels. This is the story of Pocket Aces and my guest for this episode is the co-founder, MD and CEO of Pocket Aces, Aditi Srivastava. Aditi began building Pocket Aces in 2013 with two other founding members and just about a decade later, in 2023, Sarigama acquired their company with a 52% stake. In this episode, Aditi and I have discussed everything on what works on Instagram, YouTube, how much money do content creators make and how Pocket Aces grew from just a YouTube page to now a house of multiple media brands. Uh, thanks Aditi for being on our show, Wiping Out the Norm. Really excited to chat with you today because just before the show we were speaking on how you've grown from one company to a conglomerate now which has been acquired by Saragama recently. Uh, so w really excited to know your journey specifically as to how you have wiped out the norm in the media industry and grown the company from uh, like like you said you were not the first one to start but you were the fastest one to grow so i would really like to know as to what got your interest into the media industry to begin with uh, hey radhika thank you so much for having me it's lovely to be here um so i'll start from the beginning <laughs> I uh, I grew up in the Middle East actually, oh. didn't grow up in India but when you grow up in the Middle East you are very much into all Indian things, um, right? And so right, we were very much into mm. Bollywood movies and plays and things yeah. like that, musical shows when we used to, when growing up. So I think that has just been an inherent interest of me, my family, etc. Yeah. Um, I moved to the US to do my undergrad in engineering at Princeton. Yeah. Um, I studied electrical and computer science. And when I was graduating, which was 2006, uh, the financial markets were booming. And uh, I started my career on Wall Street, mm. very much like many other people yeah. at that time. Uh, so again, very different. I went into um, Goldman Sachs's mm. asset management group, which mm. is called GSAM in New York. Mm. And actually I was in their quant group. Okay. So we were making like algorithms uh, for trading yeah. and portfolio management, etc. Huh. Um, it was super fun. Um, okay. I thought you would say super boring, but. <laughs> no, honestly, I uh, love the fact that I started my career at a place where training and uh, just, you know, uh, the, the forward thinking thought process mm. was ingrained in us basically mm. as um, you know in Goldman yeah. and uh, in such a large place also I was very lucky to have like a very amazing team mm. I'm still in touch with them so every time in New York we, okay. I, every time I'm in New York we grab lunch or dinner together yeah. and I think uh, it taught me a lot mm. about how I work yeah um, so for me, I think that was a very fun place to be mm -hmm. and I got to marry, you know, what I had studied in college with the dynamism of financial markets mm -hmm. and actually it's a very, very interesting uh, mix yeah. and so I honestly loved it. Um, while I was in New York, mm -hmm. I also got involved in a bunch of whatever extracurricular activities, things on the side. Yeah. So I was um, part of this group called the American India Foundation. Huh. What that group did was basically get high net worth individuals in the US yeah. to basically send money to or partner with uh, not for profits in India okay. uh, across sectors mm. like uh, you know sometimes it was about uh, education mm. or it was healthcare or it was waste management yeah. across sectors and our job uh, I was on their young professionals board mm -hmm. was to basically research and find the best organizations yeah. uh, to take to the high net worth individuals huh. and present them about why you know you should put on your money here what impact it will create etc yeah. and I really started loving that work mm. so that's where my interest in developmental work started okay. uh, and I'm mentioning that because uh, on the side Ashwin who is my co-founder mm. and also my I was dating him then and when we got married oh. while we were still in New York, okay. he 
on the side while he was at city huh. also in banking he got involved in film festivals in new york okay so the tribeca film festival south asian film festival all just of that just out of passion just out of passion so these were the things we were doing on the side huh. with the community okay. right in new york and that's where the media bug came in from <laughs> and still and anirudh who is my third mm. co-founder he was at, uh, at he went to wharton during this time he okay. was also engineer turned banker ah. right so basically we have very similar uh, upbringings mm. we have very similar degrees and we have very similar first uh, you know work experiences yeah. but all three of us have very different thought mm. processes as well and i think that's why we make a very good team yeah. so long story short um, when ashwin and i decided we love these other things more mm. than our day jobs yeah that was when we were like okay can we pursue this kind of stuff full time mm. and where would we do this right yeah. so both if you think of development mm. and you think of media yeah. and you're indian you do think of coming to india to do this yeah. work right because development work also there's mm. so much here that is going on right. media of course bollywood is a completely different industry mm. than say a hollywood right. and so we decided in 2011 that we will quit our jobs move to india and do these different crazy things this was just you and ashwin just me and ashwin okay. anir was at wharton at this time okay and so we moved uh, much to the dismay and horror of our parents who yeah. are like you know middle class parents they had worked their entire lives to yeah. get us to the us <laughs> to these amazing you're working in manhattan i mean it doesn't get better than that yeah. right when you coming from like a middle class mm. upbringing um but i think they gave us those strong foundations which we could then take risks yeah um you know because we had that backing right so we moved to india and i started working in avishkar in telecap it's a mm. impact investment group how uh, did you start there so i while i was still in new york when we had quit i was applying i was looking for what jobs huh. in this sector i could get everything from this organization mm. avishkar in telecap to yeah. a uh, acumen fund mm. to uh will grow which is uh, a chennai based yeah. kind of not for profit to dasra which is another not for profit uh. um this attracted me the most because this was marrying capital markets which mm. is investing mm. with the development correct yeah, right. and impact investing was not a very well known word then yeah. even now even though the movement is huge mm. lots of random people don't know what is impact investing uh. um so i applied and um uh, interviewed and basically got an offer uh uh to start an angel network uh uh which will invest into early stage uh for profit companies that were looking at low cost education healthcare okay. clean energy etc so yeah. again very interesting because i was working in capital markets in goldman yeah i was doing this not for profit kind of angel work yeah. angel investing work at the foundation i was part of yeah here i was getting to marry the two mm. right and so i moved to india to do this mm. and ashwin moved and started with reliance entertainment okay so um you know they have uh, he was involved in some of the movies like uh, at that time commando huh. and like some of those kind of movies super se upar that yeah. they were doing and then he along with his uh reliance mm. uh entertainment you know man boss at that time mm. this very nice woman who gave him a break called preeti shani okay. they moved to uh times of india to set up jungle pictures oh which will which is now times of india studio which has ah. done some amazing movies like talwar and dil dhadkne do etc okay so his journey in film yeah. and mainstream studios started when we moved to india and i was setting up this angel network and having a great time it was a lovely introduction yeah. to bharat because i was yeah. literally traveling all over the country mm. trying to find the businesses on Correct. the ground that were doing this work mm. and then taking those businesses to buildings like these yeah. where you know kind of the angel investors are yeah. and get, and matching them mm. so that's what i was doing um then again after a few years of doing that i set up a team that yeah. was very independent we had made about 21 investments okay um in 4 years mm. then basically pocket aces was set up during this time anirudh had moved from wharton to india how did pocket aces get set up so basically um 
after working for a couple of years uh-huh. with Reliance yeah. and with Times of India, mm. Ashwin felt that he was ready to basically go out on his own. Uh-huh. And um, he felt that the kind of stuff he wanted to make, he knew now enough writers and people mm. who would work with us independently to right. make that stuff. So it was a plunge. Mm. We incorporated Pocket Aces in December 2013. Okay. So it's going to be 10 years yeah. from our incorporation next month. Oh. And um, initially, it was actually very few people know this, set up as a film studio, mm. um, making feature films. Huh. And what we realized then is although he had a good network of people, when you're trying to make a feature film, huh. you need somebody to finance, you need an, for that you need an actor to say yes, mm. for that you need a director to say yes, for that you need a... So it was lots of things that needed to happen in sequence. Yeah. So every project took could take any amount of time to set up like huh. there was no it depended on when people said yes or no yeah and one thing we learned in the in that time was that in this industry mm. a lot of people don't say yes but they also don't say no mm. so you're constantly hopeful yeah you know and so the first year i think of setting up pocket pocket aces was a little frustrating mm. because while we felt that we were making progress like you would not, we, we never got to making a film at that time. Yeah. Uh, because we never got to a place where all the ducks mm. were got in line. Yeah. And so then we decided that, okay, we need to think of doing something differently where there's more control in our own hands. Mm. And that's when we brainstormed and this whole let's do digital first yeah. kind of idea came, mm. especially starting with short form content. Because for that, you can just put your own money because it's very cheap to create. How short is this? So this is the first few filter copy videos. If huh? some of you guys have watched, then it's like three minute content, four okay. minute content. And at that time, we were it was completely bootstrapped. Like yeah. even though actually we had managed to raise our first round of angel investments. Okay. Again, giving our backgrounds, uh, you yeah. know, all that. And we were connected in the yeah, you investor had ecosystem. Network. Um, so a very nice man by the name of Mohan Mulani, okay. who is obviously our first ever backer. Huh. Um, you know, he uh, he's the guy who founded Harry's, which oh. is the bar chain, okay. and then sold it to a private equity, huh. and that's how he made his, you know, oh. kind of capital. So he, you know, had given us this first half a million dollar check. Huh. Um, but these were ten thousand rupee shoots that we were doing initially. Okay. And we started releasing that content out on Facebook. Huh. Because again, having grown up in college years mm. in the US, we were very, f- we were like one of the first users of Facebook in the world. Huh. Facebook, uh, Princeton was the second school Facebook had launched in oh. ever. Right? Like it was Harvard and then Princeton. Huh. And so we were very familiar with the platform. Mm. And what we hoped is that if nobody else shares it, at least our friends will share it. <laughs> Right? And that's how it will start circulating. Okay. Because basically what you need for content is you put it out, but you need people to watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need distribution. Mm. And organic distribution, if yeah. your friends are sharing it, then their friends are sharing uh. it, then their friends are sharing it. That's the easiest way to get yeah, distribution. Right, right. That much we understood. Uh. Right? And so basically that's how we started our journey of short form okay. content. And within the first couple of months, it just blew up. When you say we, meaning you also joined Ashwin then? So when we pivoted to digital, then I joined Pocket Aces because then we figured that we needed volume of content. See, in feature film, you you can make one or two a year. Hmm. So you don't need volume, you don't need many people. It's a very boutique kind of thing. You maybe have five full-time people Hmm. and then you just work with freelancers on projects. But if when you pivot to Mm. now building a business that will create volume content. You need people, you need structures, you need processes, etc. And so by that time I had Mm. already set up my whole angel network. We had also expanded to East Africa and stuff. And so I was also thinking, okay, I can help Mm. these guys. Like now I have time and obviously Ashwin and I did have that discussion that do we want to work together? (laughs) You know, it can get complicated. (laughs) But I think because we had a third partner, uh, in Anirudh. When I, did Anirudh join? He joined right in the beginning. He came from Watton and we were like, hi, over, you're doing this with us, basically. Achha. Yeah. And why did you all think that uh, he'll be a good fit for the business? 
So it's a good question. See, I think uh, when he competed, what he was looking for uh, hedge fund or private equity huh. jobs because again he had been in banking and private equity before what. Mm. But at that time, jobs were not so easy to find, and for people who needed a visa in the U.S., huh. so he was looking. But then he was not able to, you know, get something that he really liked. Mm. So he moved to India yeah. to look for jobs in finance. Okay. In that time, I think we kind of were like, "Ye to do kabi bhi kar sakta hai," <laughs> but do this with us because it would be like exciting, and he is also a, a big content buff. Okay. And so the idea was that you want somebody that you can brainstorm with. At mm. that time, it's more that and and that who has a different kind of maybe skill set yeah. uh, than you do. Mm. And although on paper we sound very similar, yeah. um, we are all very different people. Mm. In like one is very big picture thinker. One mm. is like very good at predicting. Power and strategy and stuff, and one is great at execution. Yeah. And so together we felt that we could make a good mm. team. And Ashwin and Ani have been college roommates. They have started a few things, including a cricket team in college together. Okay. So they have worked together mm. in in yeah, a sense. Yeah, yeah. And I know Anirudh from school. Mm. So we. So this is all like a beautiful coincidence, right? These relationships. So even though Ashwin and I are married, we are the youngest relationship. Between oh. the three of us, I know Anirudh since seventh standard. Anirudh and Ashwin have been roommates since college. Okay. And then Ashwin and I only met we when we were working in New York. Yeah. How so, did you all meet? Common friends, including Anirudh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so the thing is that somehow it just felt right. Huh. And I think one advice that I always give people mm. who want to start their businesses is that. Please don't be a single founder. I think it's a very lonely journey. Yeah. So if you don't have somebody else who's also losing sleep on the same things huh. that you are losing sleep on, mm. I think it's tough. And if you, yeah. you know, however you, how much ever you brainstorm with a mentor or huh. friends or family, it's just not the same. Mm. So um, having somebody together with the ride is amazing. Yeah. And so I think. Yeah, I just fit. I don't think that uh, Ashwin or Ani thought about it so much. That do we want to work together? Uh, it was very natural. Yeah. Yeah. Chalo, okay, try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, And yeah, then you happened. started with the short form content when yes. the feature films uh, were in. So we uh, started with short form mm. content, and this whole journey has been that now we're actually working on our first feature film. Is it? Yeah. So wow. yeah, and of course, in the middle, we've built a lot of different types of formats, right? Huh. So now we do everything from short form, which is like thirty second to one minute content, mm -hmm. which is like Instagram content, okay. TikTok content. To what is the content usually about? Uh, so we have multiple channels, mm -hmm. right? We have uh, short form fiction is filter copy, huh. which is mainly entertainment. Funny entertainment content like uh, light watches. Okay. Then we have in short form we have a food channel called Gobble, uh, which does food content. We have a channel called Nutshell, which does infotainment. Mm. So these two are non-fiction. Okay. And then we have long form fiction in Dice Media, mm. which does content for its own YouTube channel, but also for your streaming OTT platforms, okay. like your Netflix, Amazon, Hotstar, etc. Okay. And we that also have a talent management arm. Yeah. And then, of course, we also build a gaming yeah. business, which is now spun off Loco okay. into a separate entity. Wow! So, so many different businesses. Like you started with which one? See, I'll tell you. We don't think about it in terms of so many different businesses. Yeah. I'll tell you how we think about it. At the end of the day, the idea why we started Pocket Aces mm -hmm. was, as young people, we felt that there was not enough content that was being made for young people mm -hmm. to watch. Because TV caters mostly to the older women demographic right. with their fiction programming. Yeah. Uh, for men, even on TV, it's basically like sports and news. Yeah. For youth, there's like the MTVs of the world. Yeah. Just that, right? There's not a, much else. Right. So we felt that यारे सबके पास तो smartphone है, mm. right? And of course, with the onset of Jio tele mm. as a, coming in as a telecom, this became hundred x the yeah. story. But even before Jio, it mm. was like at least in urban centers, 
Everybody has a smartphone. Yeah. Everybody can afford data. Mm. Wi-Fi is ha is there in like all offices. Mm. And so the idea was that as a young person, you have the ability to watch, yeah. but you don't have programming for yourself. Mm. So can we be the people who make content for young Indians by young Indians? Yeah. That was the initial thought process. We could be watching good content, right? And that's how we started. Yeah. And then when you start with a complete mm. audience focus. Mm. Then you think you are the same guy like say Radhika. Mm. Radhika also likes fiction. Yeah. She also she wakes up in the morning, she scrolls on Instagram. Mm. So I want to be there also. Mm. Then when she is commuting, maybe she is listening to a podcast. Yeah. So I want to be in audio also. Yeah. Then maybe when she is uh, basically in the office, when she takes a break, maybe mm. she watches something on YouTube mm -hmm. or she's scrolling again on Instagram. Yeah. Then when she goes home, she's probably sitting and like what she wants to watch a web series. Uh -huh. So the same audience set. Okay. They all you're also listening to music. Mm. You maybe also follow a sport. Mm. You also probably you know read articles. Mm. So if I want to cater to you yeah. as an as a persona, mm. and there are many people like you, yeah. right? But somebody else sitting right next to you could have a completely different persona. Yeah. They might spend a lot more time say e-commerce shopping. Mm. Even though the demographic and etc might be the same, yeah. So we don't think anymore in gender, age, and this geogra uh -huh. geography. We think in persona, right? Which is basically intersects. Uh -huh. So then, why should I only give you one thing? Uh -huh. Then I'm going to give you everything. You probably also follow a bunch of influencers. Mm. So I also want to get you influencers, right? Right. Right. So that's how mm. we think about what. And if you're a guy, mm. like more often than girls, I'm. You know, just that's just the data we see. Yeah. Hundred percent, you are into some kind of gaming, right? Today, gaming is huge. Yeah. And so the idea was, if I'm anyway reaching you, uh. why should I only command fifteen minutes of your time a day? Uh. I'm anyway reaching you. Right. I can cater to your interests all day long. Mm. Today, content consumption is like subeh se raat tak. It's a continuous Correct. thing. And that's that's the idea. Yeah. And so everything is from the lens of what does our audience wants, mm. and obviously our audience is broadly I would say 18 to 40. Okay. The focus is 25 to 35. Mm -hmm. Um. And because of who we are, yeah. like we started Metro first. Yeah. Huh. Because we are yeah. we grew up in urban centers. We understand that audience right. more. And then basically expanded huh. around the metro centers okay. to tier one and tier two as well. Mm -hmm. So if you look, our content will reflect those yeah. kind of families, those kind of yeah. thought process. Like there's a lot about mental health. There's mm -hmm. a lot, like little things which became a huge series yeah. is about live-in relationship. Huh. Right now, obviously, live-in relationship in India is not very common. Mm -hmm. But the idea was that two people mm -hmm. who are very comfortable with each other. These are the things they talk about. Yeah. It's all about the little things of on a daily basis. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Normal couple ki life mein koi badi cheez to ho nahi rahi on a daily basis, right? So that was the idea, okay. which people really related to, and mm. the live-in part became aspirational. Mm. So everything is very much driven by audience insights, Got and it. that is, I believe, like one of the biggest. Right to wins we have, huh. given our backgrounds, where it comes from, engineering or finance, etc. That's huh. the thing we have got into media, mm. right? Uh, the culture of our company, which is very different mm. from other media companies, even media startups. Yeah. The data thought process, mm. and of course, everything is within timelines, within budget, completely cashless yeah. company. This is our right to win. Right. It's not like we were the best creative minds, uh. but now the best creative minds work with us. Absolutely. But tell me one thing that after long form content, how did you suddenly jump into food, like Gobel? How so, how did that happen? So, like? as you know, again, the thought process is that if your consumer, if mm. your audience member, which is like a young person, youth of India, yeah. If youth of India is consuming different types of things in parallel, mm. you better make different types okay. of things. Okay. Yeah, parallel. you just wanted to command their time more. Exactly. So it's not that one day we are making web series and the other day we are food. Ha. Ye sara parallel mein chal yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So there are different mm. content teams that are working yeah. on different channels. And you're buying loyalty also from your consumers, saying that okay, we give yes. you everything you need. Exactly. And when. People are becoming super popular from our content. Huh. We are also managing them, helping them grow 
those talent yeah. grow their own Instagram channels, ha, ha, ha. right? So technically, Correct. like Pocket Aces owns hmm. uh, say five Instagram channels. Okay. But we also manage 130 influencers with 130 ha. separate. Instagram channels, many of them are on YouTube, many of them are on Snapchat. Yeah. So just imagine, technically our distribution footprint huh. includes those as well. Mm. And a huge part of why they come to us is because we know how to grow these distribution. Yeah. And today as you also know for any influencer, what is your followership, what is your reach, huh. is the main way you are measured yeah. how much somebody wants to pay you. Correct. Right? So say if a brand wants to associate mm. with you and say you are big, big on LinkedIn, yeah. how big you are on LinkedIn mm. will command how much followership they can pay you yeah. right? for that engagement. Correct, correct. Similarly, mm. that's for you know influencers, whatever platform they are on yeah. and we know how to grow those. Mm, and it. so that's the biggest reason why they would come to somebody like us versus going to a traditional talent management. There are companies. Hai. You know, who manage like A-listers and all. Yeah. But they don't have a the track record. The thought process is very different because Alia Bhatt's, Haan. people are not coming to Alia Bhatt because of her Instagram followers. Yeah. People are coming to Alia Bhatt because correct. she's anyway an icon. Yeah, yeah. Right? And they want to associate her mm. brand, with, their brand with her. Yeah. Of course, wo Instagram following to grow karegi hi. Haan, haan, you know, wo to given hai. Haan. Right? But here, it's like your followership haan. first. And then of course, so you're a content mm. creator. So, what should content strategy be? Yeah, yeah. So, we do that too with okay. the talent that we manage. Tell me about your investor journey. You said one of them was uh, an angel investor first. Yeah. And then, how did you raise your first institutional round? Um, well, I think Sequoia 314 Capital, mm. these guys have been very early partners. They came into our series, uh, a very small series A that we raised. Um, and, in which uh, year? In 2016. Oh, right in the beginning oh, only. Okay. Yeah. And the idea was, I think the good thing we did is we went to these people early. Okay. So they started tracking us early. Yeah. I think the, the day we had our first viral video, we like, you know, wrote to a few funds being <laughs> like, oh, look, right. And the good thing is you get on their radar. Yeah. And yeah, then they yeah. track progress. Right. right? Um, Sequoia did something very interesting where they were having a hackathon yeah. and they said, okay, fine. We want to test whether mm -hmm. this actually works. Uh, to convert from viewership to ROI for a brand, right? Huh. So we, they said, okay, make a video for our hackathon ke registrations huh. because last year we had X, we want to have two X registrations. Huh. Um, we made a filter copy video called Every Software Engineer Ever. Huh. And the hackathon was integrated okay. in the messaging of that video. Yeah. And I think they got 5x the number of registrations if I don't, um, oh if I God. recall correctly. What a way to test by getting free leads. Exactly. <laughs> no, and they paid us for it. Oh, they did? They, yeah, they're, they were very professional okay. about it. They said, you're making a video, you're listening, whether we invest or not is a separate yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. We'll pay you for it. Okay. Uh, like a brand so pay. it was a paid trial. Absolutely. Okay. It was a paid video. We that's were good. very happy to do it. <laughs> And so yeah, I think that's a fun. That's one of the fun stories. Yeah. I think, you know, the challenge we've had with raising capital has been that media is not very well understood by the VC community. Yeah. And media, media tech, mm. all of this is just built in the VC community in the last ten years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I do feel that the platform business makes it at least justifiable because the VC model works when you want to keep raising capital again and again and again. Yeah. Because that's how the valuations will huh. increase. If you don't need that much capital, mm. then the VC model is, you know, doesn't play out in the normal way that yeah. it's supposed to. Right. So I think uh, we were very lucky that we got investors who mm. trusted us in that model, but then they were also patient. Yeah. Uh, right. In that, okay, you know, this is a different kind of a VC business, and of course, those same investors have invested mm. in very, uh, you know, kind of exponentially growth type of businesses. Yeah. They have also invested in more offline type of businesses huh. as well, right? So we are somewhere in the middle. Correct. Because the consumer journey mm. for us was exponentially growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and revenue was also exponentially going. Huh. But that's why you don't need capital. So yeah. capital need was not exponentially growing. Mm. So it's a very interesting uh, uh, setup. But when of course then when we uh, launched Loco, which mm. was in early 2018, 
then of course it became yeah. that itself is a very but easy to understand. But what was the need to raise capital back then when you already had high growth viewership? Because you want to, that you if you're still investing in creating content, now okay. imagine you're on your short form channel. Huh. Seventy, eighty percent of your content is editorial, huh. which is what we call a piece which is just created by ourselves for not for a brand, hmm. etc. So because that the key to good distribution mm. is that and if you follow any influencer you'll see the same thing yeah. you have to keep your audience engaged yeah. every day you have to release something yeah to uske liye paisa kahan se aayega so that you need people okay people ke salary ke liye paisa uh-huh. you know so basically it's content production mm. uh people and growth Mm. We've never put money into buying views. We've never put money into yeah. grow, uh, into like buying followership and all. You create content. Mm-hmm. The views will come and the followership will come. Got it. So the investment has been into people and content ah, creation. Understood. Right. And of course, some bit of marketing, PR, all of that kind of stuff. How did you do that initially? Initially, so it's all content only, which is your marketing, also your PR, also. Ah. But then when our like our series started blowing up, we did do billboards, we did radio oh. campaigns, we did. uh college campaigns we did a uh, corporate park campaigns uh where we took our talent you know and people would go crazy in colleges and that's when you know that you are really touching the yeah. right chord you know like pe- we would take some of our actors and people would go nuts forget about that you know we uh do a lot of first hand audience insights we even call people i have also done calls by myself okay. ashwin anirudh we all have You say I'm filter copy. I'm somebody from filter copy. Yeah. People go crazy on the other side. <laughs> really? Yeah, because it's like a loved brand has called them. Like who would have thought? Yeah. Right. And so I think that's how we did a lot of your mm. PR and marketing, and of course partnering with events. Yeah. Um, you know, sponsoring some events. Uh, you know, you know all of that kind of stuff as well. On ground mm. stuff. You know, we've put up. Gobble trucks in BKC flea, that oh, kind of stuff is well. Oh, got it, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, interesting. So, and like you said, that most of your revenue comes from the brands. Uh, can you just, for the benefit of audience, give us a rough figure of how much brands pay for first the OTTs, like when they buy your content, to influencers who promote their campaigns, and to you also, like when you integrate their brand on your YouTube channels. So basically, it depends on the kind of content as well. So, say, Instagram reel content, mm-hmm. right? Uh, say a, a nutshell reel will sell for say two lakhs, mm-hmm. right? So most brands will buy in bulk, right? Okay. A filter copy music reel, huh. right? Where we create like a rap music reel type huh. of a thing will sell for say like ten lakhs. Okay. A filter copy video on YouTube, which is a three to five minute, will be about eighteen to twenty lakhs. How many subscribers uh, do we have on Filter Copy YouTube? Filter Copy YouTube, ten million. Okay, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. But you know, the thing is, it's not just about the subscribers. Yeah. It's about the viewership that you promise. Yeah. Right, and uh, that's how. So when a brand invests, right, they do something called a media evaluation. Okay. Which is basically whatever are the deliverables, they put certain cost per view, cost per impression, cost uh-huh. per reach. and that's how they justify it internally mm-hmm. there is a cost per engagement kind of model that we try to sell because you know the kind of content we do is highly engaged yeah. and a view which is engaged versus a view which is not engaged is very different okay. um right how do you measure engagement comments okay. comments shares okay. retention as well yeah. so see say youtube counts a view as 30 seconds view huh. so say in my video people uh-huh. dropped off after 45 seconds in your video uh-huh. they stayed till 3 minutes uh-huh. you can't say that the views are equally valuable yeah, yeah, yeah. correct your views will be much more valuable correct, so correct. filter copy all our channels and retention is like 95% wow right and so the key is that how do you factor that into the price ha uh-huh. that's why basically we say our engagement is high so the cost per view ha uh-huh. should be high Okay. Right? So that's one way to the that's one way to factor okay. it. Okay. But how do you like you said ten lakh for one, say music reel? Yeah, but yeah. you have such high engagements. So yeah. why not more? Like how did you come to the number ten lakh? See again, it's like a triangulation. Yeah. Of 
a what a brand is willing to what a what a brand is willing to pay for that kind of content mm. uh b the media value that it can give you um c what it takes to make you know um i think it's a triangulation of these things mm. we are premium priced in every format that we do okay so if somebody else has a music reel we are we are all priced higher than them mm. if somebody else has a 3 to 5 minute music uh, filter like a youtube video we are priced higher than them mm. mostly we are priced premium mm. also because we are catering to urban centers which are premium yeah yeah compared to you know say mm. tier 2 tier 3 centers got it so all of this stuff is baked in and you also don't want to be changing pricing in mm. every conversation yeah because then that really slows down your sale right you have to be sure that this is the short form content is a volume business mm. and so the menu card approach works very well <laughs> right ki literally ye itne ka hai ye itne ka hai that's why i'm even comfortable to say it on camera <laughs> because none of these numbers are yeah. private correct numbers right and if somebody wants to watch your podcast and then call us we'll give them these rates only <laughs> right so the the menu card approach works very well for ott huh. and for say for web series huh. even in a brand we usually have three tiers there's a uh, basically brought to you by presented by tier hmm. then there's a powered by tier and there's an associate tier the deliverables are different for these and hence the costs are different okay uh what are the costs like roughly it depends on the series because okay. some series are cheaper to make ha huh. say it's a couple series where mostly you are you know showing home and fewer spaces huh. that's cheaper to make than say uh we made a series for example uh brave hearts where huh. it was an army series mm. right or clutch which was sports drama mm -hmm. or uh operation mbbs which was completely shot in a in a hospital yeah. and things like that right so depends on the series as well okay. but it's usually like what does it swing from the least to the most associate can be anything from 20 to 50 lakhs mm. powered by can be anywhere from 70 lakhs to 1 and 1/2 crores mm. and then presented can be anywhere from 1 and 1/2 crores to 3 crores mm. and then soul if the brand wants to come for the exclusively for the entire series mm. then it's more than that more than 3 It, crores more than 3 crores mm. yeah it's not we don't want to make it unaffordable yeah uh, again everything should be justified by roi mm. right uh, and when we do similar size series on ott platforms it's a little bit more because yeah. again we are not distributing it etc huh. uh when we do large series yeah. it's obviously a lot more and mm. that is totally a cost plus plus mm. so it's going to cost 15 crores to make this show yeah and then this is our margin and so hence that's the budget okay these and what shows are the these shows are not like that huh. these shows are based on media value huh. those shows are based on the cost of production mm. that's got the it, got it got it and what are the margin rates usually can be anywhere from 10 15 20% okay yeah understood but short short the shorter the content the higher mm. the budget okay yeah because again they are paying you a lot for the media value yeah. but not for the production yeah 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 but for ott huh. there's no media value na because they are only going to distribute correct 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 so they mm. put the marketing this that from their end mm, got so it so they're just paying you for the content understood so the the biggest reason like for mm. short form some of our margins are like 80% plus Mm. is because we offer that distribution but that distribution is just sitting on our platform yeah. for us it's free ah free which we built by investing into the editorial content yeah yeah so that's the map. okay got it yeah. my next question in rapid fire we totally oh. lost it oh shit <laughs> i forgot it's rapid yeah. fire and started like answering like sorry we go to rapid fire mode yeah. yes what would have been an alternative career for you I think uh I think the development work that I was doing huh. was super fulfilling huh. uh and perhaps that and you know I've gotten that whole development thing to the mission of Pocket Aces. Oh. Yeah, which is to, you know, influence people positively. So Yeah. Yeah, I think I would have loved to do more development work and yeah. Okay, and who has been your mentor in uh, your professional journey so far? Uh a few mentors uh including my first bosses to 
the founder of Avishkar, who was my second boss, Vinny. Vinny. Okay. Uh, very, we are very, uh, like, very much in touch even now. Okay. And um, I would say there's a few other like few women also that I'm ex inspired by. Like, I wouldn't call it a mentorship relationship. Huh. Uh, there's a coach I have, a leadership coach huh. uh, called uh, Vijayshri Parmeshwar. She is uh, uh, runs her own consulting firm. I think she has been amazing. So I think mentor is a very like is a one word, but there are many of these. Like it takes a village, I feel, to raise an entrepreneur as well. Yeah, yeah. And so it's been my ex bosses, my coach, mm. my and few lots, lots of people I'm inspired by. Yeah. That have all contributed to the journey. Okay. Parents, spouse. Yeah, co-founders yeah, yeah. like yeah so <laughs> understood and uh, what's been one decision that you are most proud of i think just getting on this journey along with these two co-founders of mine who were friends and um you know spouse and mm -hmm. i think it was just it's been a really fun and fulfilling ride mm -hmm. uh yeah just proud of taking the taking the ride with them together yeah. and building something of value understood so. And uh, what is that one thing that you think that could have been done a little differently? I wouldn't say what you regret because that's again a very heavy word. Yeah. And looking at what you said in your last answer that you enjoyed your ride, I don't yeah. think you regretted anything as such. Yeah, yeah. But if you had to go back in time, what's that one thing you would change slightly? Like uh, in the pocket aces, uh, and yeah, in the professional in journey. Yeah, there have been many hard times, huh. right? And all of those hard times have been big lessons. I think um, last year we had, you know, we hired too many people and then we thought that the market was all going to come back mm. and then it came back slower than it did. Mm. So we had to do a restructuring mm. uh, this Feb, which was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life, which is like asking a bunch of people on the same day to yeah. leave. I think that I would never wish upon anyone. Yeah. And so I wish we had done that differently. I think we hired too quickly in the hopes of, uh, you know, the market mm. coming back, etc. I think we should have caught ourselves earlier mm. and not done that. Got so, it. Yeah. And like you said that, you know, there have been hardships and we learn more from our failures than successes. So what's that one lesson apart from the one you mentioned along your professional journey that you've learned and you've been thankful for, you know, that experience that, okay, good that it happened so that you could have been saved from it in future. Well, I, I wouldn't say saved from it, but I, you know, you do realize that when the momentum is with you, that's when other people will also want to back you huh. versus in the hardest times, it's actually the hardest to get. When you really need people, huh. then it's actually much harder. When you don't need them is when they will come. Yeah. So it's a counterintuitive thing that I think we have realized in our journey, right? Yeah. So whether it's an investor, they'll only come when you're already doing well and you don't need money. Yeah. Right? Whether it's a, a person you're trying to hire, whether it's, so I think that learning yeah. was very much there and you know, initially, it would feel, you would feel very bad about the fact that, oh, it, I'm in a hard space. Yeah. Right now, if you don't back me, then who will back me? Mm. But I realized that maybe it's too much to expect. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and there's nothing personal and yeah. no hard feelings. And uh, there we have had investors who have had, really had our backs in mm. the hard times. Um, uh, like the 314 team has just been excellent, right? Yeah. And constantly always, you know, brainstormed with us, led to new introductions, led to our further capital raises, etc, yeah. etc. Et uh, and I feel there are very few people who yeah. are like that. You cannot expect, um, you know, most of you, most people to ride with you mm. when the ride is very tough. Mm. Um, now I won't expect that anymore. So yeah. I think that's, and I think that's what you need to do for your own peace of mind as well. Yeah. And you better get all everything when you don't need it. Yeah. So I think that's the learning. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the learning basically. Understood. Yeah. Got it. And uh, you know, if I had to ask you that who's been one of the most influential people in your life that you have learned the most from? 
I think influential is in two ways. Uh, one is who has been the most influential almost that you do things for also, which is like my parents, yeah. especially my dad. I think half my ambition is just in inheritance from he is crazy ambitious yeah. um, and constantly pushing us to do better. And so I think a lot comes from there. Mm. And so very influential in my whole path, right, as a yeah. human being. Um, I think I learned to do business in India from the Okay. So I think he has been like a very strong influence. What's the in my one life. lesson you've learned from him to do business in so India? So many are so many. When I came from Goldman to here, like I didn't know anything. Huh. Um, everything from how to approach people to how not to lose patience to how to be unreasonable uh. and persistent uh, to how to let hardships just smile through it. Yeah. So I think this has been huge learning. So I worked with him very closely for like many years. Okay. And he's like a master at structuring and things yeah. like that as well. Uh, so yeah, I think and the work ethic mm. and culture upholding etc is from my Goldman bosses. Mm. They were my first trainers. And I think a lot from Ashwin Anirudh, my co-founders as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And on an everyday basis, I learn from the young people in my team because I'm too old now <laughs> for our own content. So I think what young people want, only young yeah. people can tell you in their most authentic fashion. Mm. So I think our innovation comes from bottom up, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I think is very key for any company to survive mm. uh, in the coming few years. Got it, got yeah. it. And what's the definition of success and power for you? Legacy. Okay. <laughs> this answer yeah. I can give you short. Yeah, very short. <laughs> People should remember what I did and what I built yeah. after I am gone. Okay. Right? So I think for me yeah. that is it. It's not really money, it's huh. nothing else. It's basically like mm. the respect for what you built and it lasts longer yeah. than you. And uh, lastly, what's the one last thing that you did for the first time? Oh, something recently that I did for the first time? Yeah. Well, we, uh, after we announced our deal and we took a little 10 day trip, we had to go for a friend's wedding to the US. So after the wedding, we went for three days of just hiking, mm. just uh, me and Ashwin uh, to Utah. So we did like a three day just hiking trip, wow. which was amazing. And while we have been hiking several times, we have never done it like this. Uh -huh. It was amazing to be Does your like Instagram in have the nature. pictures on this? You know, I've not posted anything from that, so I should. You should. I post very less. It's enough I post about work. <laughs> I mean, like personal stuff, there's no time. Now is so, the yeah. time to do it after the acquisition now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. So I yeah. think, no, I'm working equally hard or even more. Um, yeah. It's just on different things. Yeah, so it's yeah. great because now I don't have to spend time on that. I get to spend more time on business. Right. But yes, that is, it was a really, I recommend it to everybody. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'll also try to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, and because our show is named Wiping Out the Norm, just one instance where you think you have wiped out a norm in certain way. Yeah, I think at Pocket Aces, we have <coughs> totally wiped out the hierarchy that has is very inherent to the media ecosystem. Mm. Ki actor is more important than writer uh. is a uh, director is more important than writer is more important than producer uh. is more important than blah blah blah. Like we have totally wiped out this norm, mm. and uh, it's a very very meritocratic and uh, even a spot by boy is given the same respect that like your main actor is given right and so we have totally wiped out that norm and I'm very very proud of it because yeah. it's that caste system ah. of media is something that we just value wise just yeah. did not agree with. That's amazing actually because that's prevalent across your big production houses or Absolutely. studios. Absolutely. So it's good to see that you wiped out the norm in a way that I'm, I'm sure you might be having a lot of women members also in your team. Yeah, like I would say we need more, <laughs> but we have a pretty, I think we have a 38% women across okay. the org, uh, need more. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, it is again very meritocratic hiring. Mm. Um, the 
you require diverse opinion in every team yeah. so i'm not even very fond of like all women teams and all mm. because at the end of the day Merit you matters. need an all round also you need an all rounded yeah, thought process yeah, yeah. and i do think uske liye you need young old Correct. you know male female ha huh. uh small town metro everything yeah so um yeah but i am very much like it's very very much equal opportunity yeah like hiring in re- in the true sense of it yeah. yeah on that great note i thank you aditi for thank joining you. us today and had a great time discussing all the aspects of your big conglomerate now on thank how you. do you all function and thanks for explaining to us in detail on every count so yeah uh, i enjoyed it and i hope you enjoyed your time with us i did this was it was <laughs> lovely and uh, we went into quite a few details yeah. so it was it was quite fun it was cool. quite fun thank you so much for having me thank you for being there with us